trial by error. I know it's not how the saying technically goes. You've probably heard trial and error, right? But the thing about trial and error is it sounds hopeful. You try and maybe you get it right. But trial by error? That assumes failure up front. How does this have anything to do with no code? Stay with me. When I started my business a year ago, I was on a mission to deliver tech solutions to business owners in weeks, not years. And it all began with a wedding app. No code tools let anyone build apps, websites, and workflows without writing traditional code. Just drag, drop, and connect. And at first, it feels like magic. In a world where tech solutions take what seems like forever to build, no code is a shortcut. It's fast, generally affordable, and seemingly simple. In March of this year, my sister came to me and asked if I could build an app for her wedding, which was in two weeks. She wanted a central place for her guests to connect. She wanted them to be able to communicate with each other, view event details seamlessly, share photos, and I thought it was the perfect challenge. So I phoned a friend and in 48 hours, yes, 48 hours, we had a fully functioning app. Because the app was such a success, we thought that this could be a great idea for other couples that were having international weddings. So we partnered with her travel agent to beta test this against a bigger, larger, more complex wedding. And that's kind of where no code true colors truly started to show. The first big issue with no code is vendor lock-in. So you don't own the source code of your application. So if you want to move it or scale it or migrate it, those options aren't really available to you unless you leave that platform and abandon your app completely. And on top of that, if something breaks, you're in an even worse position because I'll get into this a little bit later in the video, debugging options are very limited. And so we submitted a support request once and it took them three weeks to get back to us and the response wasn't even helpful. In our case, we used Glide and for a small wedding, it was great. But as soon as we wanted to scale or migrate or make something a little bit more customized, we were very limited. And the only option was to change platforms. So start from scratch or take a different approach. In addition, you are tied to this vendor and really at their mercy. If the platform shuts down, if they implement a new feature, if the site's down, you can't really do anything to control it. You have to solely rely on this vendor that you are using. No code looks affordable up front. $20 a month to build an app sounds great, but the way that they get you is that a lot of the time they charge per user, um, per data usage, per feature. So as you scale or if you want to get more customized or if your app gets bigger or you hire more people onto the team, a lot of the time they charge for all of these different things. In addition, if you have multiple people on your team, a lot of these platforms charge for the people that are allowed to work on the application. I think they call it seats. So for example, if I'm developing the app and I have somebody else that also needs to access the app to develop it, I also have to pay an additional fee for them on top of all the other features that you're using in your application. So any third party plugins or integrations, usually you have to pay extra for. So the base cost is typically affordable, but as you try and add more features and make the app functional, there's a lot of different hidden costs that you need to take into consideration upfront before you end up with a fully built app and then you can't afford to support it. Here's the irony. No code aims to simplify development, but as your app grows, the logic can get a lot more complex and harder to maintain. So for example, in Glide, all of the logic is handled in columns. So even doing something like filtering a list could 
take multiple columns to do something incredibly simple. And down the line, when you have to go back into this no code application to update it, maintain it, change the logic, it can be a little bit hard to remember what was doing what and why. Your only option is kind of just to go through and test it, but it's not very clear and it can get pretty confusing pretty quickly. Debugging in no code, it's kind of like shooting in the dark. There's no real easy way to step through your logic or pinpoint errors. You're just guessing and hoping something works. In traditional coding, you get logs, breakpoints, and error messages. In no code, you get silence. <laughs> Hours wasted away just clicking around, stepping through sequences and trying to find the issue and hoping that you can replicate the issue. After experiencing vendor lock-in and seeing the costs pile up, I realized I needed something better. No code was great for small projects for proof of concepts, but I couldn't keep scaling with all of these trade-offs holding me back. So I started to slowly but surely shift my approach. I'm now focused on building a traditional tech stack. Here's what the shift means. I can design an app once and deploy it for multiple clients with minimal tweaks. We own the source code and the data, so we're not tied to any vendor. I can optimize performance, add custom features, and debug issues instantly. The best part? This approach lets me keep most of the benefits that come with no code, speed, flexibility, affordability, while avoiding the trade-offs that originally held me back. If you're curious how we're building this out, let me know in the comments and I can share the architecture, the tech stack, and more details about the entire process. No code tools are still incredibly powerful. For small projects, for proof of concepts, MVPs, they're fast, accessible, and if you don't plan to scale your application and you're not going to have thousands, even hundreds and hundreds of users at a time, there could be a place for you in no code. It's just important to understand what the trade-offs are so that you don't end up in a regrettable situation. Now, back to my original point about trial by error. When I started my business, because I went into it assuming that nothing would be perfect, I mean nothing, I allowed myself the opportunity to experiment and learn. And had I not taken this approach, I think I would have still been stuck on the sidelines because I wouldn't have given myself the opportunity to try no code. It's because of no code that I was able to land my very first client and get my business off the ground. So I have a very special place in my heart for no code. I think it's really important to understand that no code is just a starting point. And at the end of the day, I think that the overall message here is that trial by error is not aiming for perfection. It's understanding that you're always striving to learn more. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.